A few years ago, a guy named Riley Keen was accused of cheating after winning a keyboard typing competition. In another situation, monkeytype.com, a popular typing site, wouldn't put him on the leaderboard after clocking a whopping 500 words per minute because his score was suspicious. And let's be honest, it is questionable given that the average typing speed is 40 words per minute. But here's the thing. He did not use a bot to rig the system, nor did he bribe judges to fudge the numbers. If he did not cheat, how did he win? And how did he win with outrageous speeds that people find it hard to believe that his scores were legitimate? He used a device called the Carecorder, which he built with his team, and it was originally designed for disabled individuals. Instead of using buttons, the Carecorder uses switches that you can push either up, down, left, right, or inward and each switch corresponds to a specific character. This design lets a user type faster because of less finger movements, but the switches aren't the only things that make Keen type at blazing fast speeds. The care quarter also allows him to chord words. This is called cording, and it's what enables you to type faster than physically possible on any other keyboard. Now, we write by hand at about 15 words per minute. And when the keyboard was invented in 1867, output increased to 40 words per minute. Great. But we've been stagnant for over 140 years. Why is it that the average person today is still typing at 40 words per minute, the same pace as it was in 1867? Aren't we supposed to see improvements in our speeds given that technology has advanced a lot? One explanation for this stagnancy would be the limitation of a design aspect of the keyboard itself. You press one button, it outputs one character. Let's say you have a long word like responsibility. The speed at which you type the word is limited by character by character typing. Having a good keyboard and high dexterity fingers help, but the bottleneck is still there. With the care quarter, you mash a few switches together and the word gets produced in the blink of an eye. Another reason why we're still slow stems from history. It's been said that the keys on the original keyboard were laid out in alphabetical order. But the key bars kept jamming because typists were typing really fast, so Christopher Latham Scholes, the inventor, rearranged the keys to QWERTY to prevent jamming. We don't really know if that's true or not, but Scholes came up with a few other layouts before he died. It's safe to assume that he wasn't satisfied with his original layout, which was the QWERTY. At some point in his life, he sold the design to Remington Arms, a company that had the means to bring the typewriter to market. And boy, did they really bring it to market. A product that might have been just a first draft was mass produced and we still use it to this day. So, is the Carecorder the device that's going to solve this problem? Not everyone is convinced. For starters, it's expensive because it's a new product that cannot benefit from economies of scale. It costs $299, so it's easier in the pocket to buy a keyboard on Amazon for $15. We'll have to wait several years before it becomes affordable, assuming the company survives. Relearning how to type on a new device is also a challenge for most people. The QWERTY is so ingrained in our society that swaying people to use a new design is difficult. Another convincing argument that one user on Reddit shared is that the care quarter doesn't have labels. If you leave a keyboard to someone who has never used it, they'll be able to type words on a screen without supervision because the buttons have labels. With the care quarter, you'll have to rely on a quick reference guide that is printed separately. And let's face it, those prints can easily get lost. You'd think the care quarter team would give up though. After all, the arguments against the device are sound. But like any smart company, they listened to the market, got feedback, and developed another product in response to that feedback. This new device is called the Carecorder Lite. Introducing Carecorder Lite. Carecorder Lite functions exactly the same as your keyboard with one powerful twist. While you can still output individual characters, Carecorder Lite can also output entire words or phrases by pressing many keys simultaneously. You don't get the advantage of switches, but you don't have to learn to use a new layout either. Their original goal on Kickstarter was $10,000, but the device was so popular they ended up raising $100,000. About a year later, they ran another successful Kickstarter campaign with the Carecorder X, a USB that can turn any keyboard into a cording enabled device. They might come up with other products in the future as well that might blow our minds, but we'll see. 
This essay was prompted with the question, what if one day we could transpose our thoughts into written words at blazing speeds? Let's say there will be a technology in the future where you can directly turn your thoughts into words on the screen in just a blink of an eye by just touching your device. Can you imagine texting someone, hey, how's it going, in a split of a second? Or can you imagine writing a book in days, not months? The experience of seeing words appear on your screen the exact moment that you think them is absolutely incredible and why we believe so much in Caracorder technology. The goal of the Caracorder company is to help people type at the speed of thought, which is a lofty endeavor. It also looks like they're not married to a single product to achieve that goal, as evidenced by the different technologies they have been producing. But will they go down in history as another one of those that tried? Or will they revolutionize society by helping us put words on screens as fast as we can think? Real quick, first of all, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Second, I have a coupon code on the description below for the Caracorder site. I'm going to get commission for the sales that come off of that code, so if you decide to use it, thank you so much in advance. I appreciate you hanging out with me in this video and I'll see you next time.